Well, good morning, brethren. Greetings in the name of Jesus on this beautiful Sabbath day. Very nice day. It's actually been getting a little hot, but let's see. The last time that I spoke here, which was, well, let me get my pages right here. <laughs> um, okay. So on the 18th, five, I guess it was, right? 518. This is the sixth month, right? Yeah, okay. So I started this theme, and I, I knew that it was going to, I mentioned back then, I knew it was maybe going to have parts two, three, four, question mark, I'm, I'm not sure. And I didn't, uh, I was actually, I'll tell, to tell you the truth, um, <clears throat> starting this topic the last time, the theme of eternal power and Godhead, eternal power and Godhead. And truth be told, brethren, I was actually looking forward to, because it was the next Sabbath that I was going to go to, McAllister, USA, and I was. They, <laughs> I thought, okay, since I've been through this once, I was going to go through it again and maybe iron out, rough out some edges, whatever, however you say that. Anyway, but that I did not. I didn't go there. So, so bear with me. Please be patient with me. So this theme of eternal power and Godhead, if you recall, um, it was in Romans where uh, Paul is uh, doing this discourse, and I went through uh, uh, Romans chapter 1, verses like 4, 6, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20, and we were talking a little bit this morning, I think, about the pride of man and the loftiness of his brain, his mind, um, because we are human beings, we're carnal, we're born in this world, and so in Actually, it's Romans 1. I was actually going to Romans 19 or 20, but that's not the case. So Romans, where Paul is describing these humanity here, that, um, where was this? For the invis uh, In verse uh, 20, Romans 1, 20, for the invisible things of the world from, um, from him, meaning the Almighty, God Almighty, the Creator, from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. That they are, that they are without excuse. Um, so there's human beings that have been detached from their maker. Human beings are detached, um, separated from the one that made us. So, so, regarding this theme of eternal power and Godhead, um, Godhead, if you look at the Greek, it's a, it's a theological term, it's a theological word. It actually implies well, something that's, or something or someone, something that's beyond us. Something divine, something as we would, I guess, think of heavenly. Um, so, def so something beyond this, what we see around here, human beings and the way we interact with one another, and well, actually, if you're born again, do you not act differently? Hmm. If we are partakers of divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. I can't remember where that is. Maybe it's Peter. Anyway, so it's an intriguing topic. Godhead is mentioned three times in the Scriptures. Godhead. That word, Godhead. Three times in the Scriptures. So, Romans uh, one twenty was the first one. So, I'm going to try to flow on into the part two here. Part two of eternal power and Godhead. And we'll find the next place where that is, um, where Godhead, or, or, or the second place, or the two out of the three, I guess you could say. Now, so I had to, I had to write down this uh, comment, this thought last night regarding eternal power. Okay, so do you ever just think, meditate 
about the um, Creator. Isn't that an amazing thing? Just you think about that. We're we're here in this building, or here in the Church of God, and I'm looking at you. Some of you are looking at me. <laughs> now, think about, and there's, there's distance between us. There's, I guess you could say, 3D going on here. It's an amazing thing. Even just the placements of things. L notice this. There's lights. There's, there's energy coming from these LED bulbs. The complexity of our world. And being able to take your hand and hit the wood and it hurts. Pain. Where does that pain come from? Who made that? Causes us to pain. And we can look at a bottle of water over there. We see rich colors. Blues, the hues, the blues and the reds. That candle, if it's lit properly, will give some light in the darkness. Now, think about this. Our experiences... Um, so, so these can make noises. Here, I'll put it right here. People make, people make tunes. It doesn't take much to, oh, here, let me put that down. <laughs> See, and we can, we can also forget things. And I mean, just, I have to think about that gravity. If I drop this, it will break. Um, would you know that if enough smoke gets in this, because back in the day, you know, had, you know, I was in charge of cleaning out the globe because it'll get black in there. So, but it helps, it helps shield from the wind so you can actually have a light in the dark and carry this with you. Anyway, it's just, it's just the power, the power, the electricity here, um, you know, wood that came from trees that I didn't make. I just, it just is a marvel. It just is a mar every facet of our existence. And, okay, so should we consider the magnitude of this life, of, of beings, whether it's us, animals, uh, marvelous little creatures that behave a certain way? Why would an ant latch onto my hand and just really go to town and, and put a whole bunch of, where was it, right here, put a whole bunch of... Uh, venom or toxin or whatever in me because the, because the thing was mad because I picked up a rock when I was mowing the um, grass. So I disturbed something. So the magnitude of experience of our minds, of mass and substances, uh, all, all aspects of creation and how each relates to each other. Uh, the symbio I guess symbiosis is another word if you want to get fancy with big words. Um, people that study interactions and the weather systems. <laughs> okay. And even the magnitude of things that are foretold. Isn't that something? That we can be human beings with intelligence and with faith and heart to read this book and I'll tell you, brethren, if you want a discourse on just how important this book is, go and watch uh, or listen to Pastor Bill Hicks' sermon on the Holy Bible on, the web, on his website uh, in Tennessee. It, it's people have, I wrote it down here, I'll just mention it now. Mentioned in that, he said, people may ask, God doesn't talk to me. See, we, do, we read the stories in the Scriptures. We read where the Almighty spoke to people. He spoke through a donkey. But people will ask, why doesn't He reveal, reveal Himself now? Where is He? Does He exist? And Pastor Hicks says He has. It's right here. The words are here. It's right here. And that's why, brethren, I'm telling you, that's why last sab when, the last time I mentioned this, when I was um, mentioning, I, I know I spent a good portion of that sermon talking about this, these electronic, they call it AI things, where you interact. It's not artificial intelligence. It's knowledge-based systems that are computerized, and they're getting things so, fit, so swift, so interconnected, 
that the horsepower of these computer systems can just really just get you to that information so rapidly, so fast. Want to learn how to change an oil, your oil on a Hyundai Santa Fe? Go to YouTube. My, be careful with trying to be an at-home electrician, though. You know, be careful. <laughs> anyway, so... Um, well, see, now right there. Do I have it all together? See, I'm, I'm a human being. I just forgot what I was... I just forgot. So, see... Um, no, it wasn't. It was me. Yes, it was. It was that that thing. We've got a lot of these these computer system power things. Whatever. Um, you can be on. Ask this. Ask the, these things. The question. Type it in and see what the research, search results are. Do any other so-called religious writings that man? Where did they come? Did man make this stuff up? Does that make even this Word of God we believe to be the Holy Scriptures all the more precious? God breathed. And things, wow, this Scripture must be coming through. This must be true. The, well, is each of the Euphrates River drying up? That's foretold and it's happening. Wars and rumors of roars. As in that we were talking this morning in Sabbath school. As in the days of Noah. Um, the sorrows and pains and hurts. and Jesus said, and the love of many shall wax cold in the last days. So there's so much hate and distrust. And um, so back to this. So the magnitude of things foretold that in the Word of God here, these words, the captivating and does it draw you in? Okay. The magnitude of His mercy. And to believe in His mercy and to think, why am I so bad? Why am I evil? Why do I do this, that, and the other? And is it right? Is it wrong? When someone, when you call Walmart support and you say that, you know, and a refund was issued because, because you think you didn't get something in your order, come to find out you did have it in your house, and you call them back and you say, I want you to reverse that refund that you issued. What? Sir, and the man's name was Mark. Sir, sir, what? That's strange. He he hadn't heard that before. That someone would want to call and reverse. I said, "Well, go to the store and repurchase it." He chuckled. He had to put me on hold for a while. He had to go talk with whoever. And sir, that's okay. That's okay. And I and I mentioned, <laughs> brother, I'm telling you. Well, it's not okay. Because I've gotten something that's, you know, I've gotten something. Anyway, that, you know, just try to be on the up and up, brethren. It's um, something about a conscience. Something about having, we're told there's something about having a good conscience before God. So, His mercy, His love, the magnitude, all of these things, patience, the all. Okay, has Jesus Christ come back to earth? We sang that song. Has Jesus Christ come back to earth again? Is God still waiting? Try to draw all men to His Son to be saved. That He's waiting for human people to repent because He's will to repent. He is willing. Notice this. Is He willing to share eternal goodness? Now think about that magnitude. Eternal goodness, joy, happiness with creatures that didn't deserve it. Being carnal, that is. That's why, turn over to the next, that's why, and I'm going to continue this little, okay, that's why, turn the, it's dire of grave concern, gravity, to turn from our sinful ways. Jesus' ways are not sinful. Jesus' ways are not sinful. They never were sinful. They're not sinful. The devils are. 
And he's even transformed into an angel of light. Uh-oh, brethren. Uh-oh, brethren. So it's, it's not good. It's, um, it's, it's not good. So, now, um, eternal power in Godhead. Now, so thinking about all this magnitude of, of stuff. And you know, when Job and the, his, what, three friends were really hashing this stuff out, Job had everything taken from him except his life. Job. Some, some words here are just, they just can captivate you. When the Almighty finally speaks, um, so I, I wrote down this, where was, where was thou? Where were you? In Job 38. So if we go to Job 38, starting at verse 1, Job 38, 1. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, or tornado, as we know, know them around here. Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? And brethren, I'm telling you, um, to mishandle, oh, my, my, my. To mishandle, to mishandle what our Maker says in the Scriptures here, to mishandle it. Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man, and I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. And do you ever just think about when you listen to this scripture on your MP3 or audio, or you read it, and do you ever think, um, okay, I need to pause. Um, do we take, there's a phrase, do we ever take stock of ourselves? Um, there's, there's so much that he describes, his mighty acts, if you read or listen through the rest of Job here. Can, who can number the clouds in wisdom? Just everything with creation. Um, and man wants to argue with it. Man wants to claim. I'm, I'm telling you, I was watching this CB, CBN thing yesterday, and the world is going after this thing. This they're, they're, They think the world is coming to an end. The sky is falling, whatever. Climate change. But this man on this news report mentioned yesterday, he says, while Belgium or Germany is concerned about the end of the world, the people of the country are concerned. They're concerned about making making it to the end of the month in their paychecks, because man is putting these what do they call it regulations, taxes, because people don't understand. They don't, and they don't want to know. They're we can be fooled. We can be fooled. That. Um, People say that the earth is getting populated, but when my son and I went out to Red River, New Mexico, there's a lot of land. You actually don't from out of here you can go and there's not there's a lot of land. There's there's room. Okay. Um so but now, okay, so regarding the creator, his eternal power and godhead. I I think I think something here beautiful can be said and they're not my <laughs> they're not my words um, in ecclesiastes ecclesiastes uh, 3 um, nope that is not it uh, let's see here oh okay see now that's something else isn't that something Ecclesiastes 3.1? No. I missed a one. Ecclesiastes 3.11. This is great. He hath made everything beautiful in His time. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Also, He hath set 
the world in their heart, so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the in, from the beginning to the end. Um, you know the His eternal power and Godhead. Um, I guess human beings we are we have this what's that word propensity or we have this desire that we want to talk we want we want to talk about something that's bigger than us right we want, man wants to find out what because we marvel at we marvel at creation and we marvel at each other you know we're like someone will say well it's all about me <laughs> we think we're right why do we have pain why do we get mad and why do we have nice moments we can go to the coffee shop or something and get and they'll get the order right we're thankful for that if someone is in time of need do we think about that Someone's hurting and you're in pain. Uh, so, let's see here. Acts 17. I think that's where we're going to go to next regarding the next time or the next place where Godhead is, is mentioned. Mm -hmm. Brother Paul, if we start at... Um, Let's see, he was waiting uh, in, Acts, in Acts, uh, Acts 17, and we'll, we'll just say 7, 6, uh, 17, 16. Um, in this Athens, in this, um, was that, is that Greece? Athens, Greece. Do we see similarities in our day and age being like the ancient Egyptians or ancient Babylonians? Do we see those same kind of things now, brethren? The way our society is, the way our world is. Because Paul here in verse 16, now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him. Do our spirits get stirred? When he saw the city wholly given to idolatry, idolatry, idols, idol worship. When you can go into we can be standing somewhere in these, one of these retail places, and during, you know, come, come December, you're going to hear about this made up character. Oh, here comes so and so, here comes so and so, coming down whatever lane, living, you know, coming from the North Pole. And I'm thinking, no, he's not. No, he's not. That's not true. Not true. They're, dis and these Jews were disputing with him devout persons in the market daily. Certain philosophers of the Epicureans and Stoics encountered him and said, what will this babbler say? He seems to set forth some strange gods because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. So there is something intriguing about this idea of being a Godhead or something outside of this world. So people do. They Now what strange gods did they have? Because he was telling them about Jesus, the Son of the living God. And they took him and brought him to Areopagus. I'm not sure what status this man was. Saying, may we know what this new doctrine is whereof thou speak that you're speaking about. <laughs> For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. For the Athenians and strangers were, that were, were there, spent their time and nothing else but to either tell or to hear some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. You know, I used to be afraid and be concerned to walk under a ladder. It doesn't affect me anymore at all. I'll do it on purpose. Well, I'll make sure that someone isn't, that, you know, doesn't drop a tool on my head or something. But I'll do it on purpose. I am not afraid 
I'm telling, I'm telling you, brother, I told my kids that. I'm not. Anyway, back to this. For as I passed by and I beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, big capital letters, to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship. Him declare I, I unto you. God that made, now this is kind of sounding like Job here, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything. Can we give some sort, some sort of creation back to the creator that made it? Okay. Um, not with made with hands, as though he needed anything. Seeing that he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made one blood of all nations, for to of all men, for to dwell on the face of the earth, and hath determined the times be, before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. Why do we have Native Americans in this country? Why are the Germans where they are? Why are why are we here? Why are we Oklahoma? Why am I an Oklahoman? I don't. I didn't do this. Okay. Um, that they should seek after the, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after and find Him, and find Him, though He be not far from every one of us. For in Him we live and move and have our being. Isn't that something? Just right here. Why are we going about as people, and we get our blessings, we get our nourishment, and we have our being. How am I able to breathe? Is the breath of life in me? As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Now, think about the, the, eternal, the eternal power in Godhead. So, if there's a relationship in this Godhead, we're part of an offspring, are we part of the Godhead? Are we part of this divine family? Does he want a divine family? Brethren, does he want people to be born again? And partakers of the divine nature? That's what the scripture says. We ought not. And I, I had to put that down here. Um, yeah, we ought not. These are yeah, serious words. Ought not. Ought not what? We ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold, silver, stone, graven by art and man's devices. People will make statues, and they've made statues for hundreds or thousands of years. Certain religious organizations have made statues. People bow to them. If there's a flood happening, people will hold these things and save the block of wood, you know, the carved thing. Um, that's not who we, that's, that's not who we put our trust and faith in. That's not what we put our, our trust and faith in. And the times of this ignorance, God winked at. You know, he turned, he's turned an eye. But, and this was what, 2000, this is Acts, so was this about 2000 years ago? But so this was Paul. Yeah, this was Paul, right? Paul. Paul said this back then. But now, in Od now. So this was back then. Commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because there's a judgment day coming. So, um, so regarding these things that we that we realize that are happening in the world, and the religion that we've possibly adopted, we've been handed down traditions of men. Does the Godhead see all of this? So if we believe in an almighty creator, God the Father, does he see this? Does his son, Jesus, at the right hand of God in heaven, does he see this? And do we see this? Oh, there it is, divine right here. Again, Godhead, divine. Let's, uh, let's, let's, Let's look at 2 Peter 1 4. 2 Peter 1 4. Uh, 
Yes, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped corruption that is in the world through lust. And would you know that there's, well, there's, there's qualities, there's behaviors that go along with this, if you read on. Beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, virtue knowledge, knowledge temperance, temperance patience, patience godliness, and godliness brotherly kindness, and brotherly kindness charity. So, is this a characteristic of a wonderful Godhead? For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So the Godhead, um, if it's if that if that word, brethren, the word Godhead, if you look up in your Strong's Concordance, if it means divine, if it's holy, godly, Jesus reminds us, "Be ye holy," or actually, I think that was John, "Be ye holy," and that's in Leviticus too, or, and maybe in Peter, yeah, Peter. In Hebrews 3.1, the writer of Hebrews says, Wherefore, holy brethren. It's supposed to be called holy brethren. Um, and how should we live? When Brother Paul wrote to Brother Titus in oh, Titus, Titus chapter 2. Where is this? Titus? Somewhere around here, Titus. Yes, Titus. It's um, yeah. Is that before or after Timothy? Be after Timothy. Okay, Titus. Titus two and twelve. Let's see. Titus two and twelve. Two twelve. Two teaching us. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So the Godhead, uh, that we should live godly, um, uh, the God Almighty, and that involves our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's see. So the Godhead. Now, I haven't spoken much yet about Jesus Christ. Um, where do we start? How, how, do we, how do we... We've talked about God the Father. We talk about the Almighty. We talk about the Creator. So where does Jesus come into the picture? The Son of the Living God. So, so you can. There are so many scriptures, brethren. So many. Let's uh, let's go to Colossians one. Do you recall that Jesus said, "If you have seen me, you've, ah yes, you've seen the Father." That Jesus said that. Now, if he knows, if he didn't sin. If there was no guile found in his mouth, as the scripture says, then I have to believe what Jesus said. I, I, I have to. Okay, Colossians 1. Colossians 1. 15. Actually, 14. No, 13. How about 12, 12? Okay, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us me to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Notice that light. L I G H T. Do you remember that Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And the Almighty said, let there be light at the beginning. And that was before what we would realize the sun. S-U-N. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. Notice that darkness was from the beginning. The darkness upon the face, and it was called night hath translated us, converted us, adopted us into the kingdom of His 
dear son. We can't leave out that word dear. Dear son. You know, Jesus, even in Acts, Jesus is referred to as thy holy child, Jesus. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. 15. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? You ever think about if Jesus was with the Father from the foundation of the world, because Jesus said, Father, you loved me from the foundation of the world. I believe that's in John. For thou lovest me. That's an interesting thing if you listen or read. I like to listen on the audio. I'll listen to John 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Listen to, it takes about 20 minutes to, to listen to that. Just listen to that interaction that the Savior that's revealed to us Listen to that interaction, that heartfelt attitude of prayer to his Father. For thou lovest me before the world was, from the foundation. The Scripture says, the Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things. So, is Jesus Christ is he integral into, or is he integral in the Godhead? Is he integral? Um, okay, so regarding what Pastor Hicks mentioned, people saying, God's not talking. Let's see. In Hebrews... Where was this? In Hebrews? At sundry times? Where is this? Where is this at? Hebrews? If you go to the beginning of the book of Hebrews, God, verse 1, God. That's an interesting thing. It starts off, God. I never really noticed that before until now. God. Brethren, think about it. God. What better lead in or what better God? God. Who at sundry times and divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets hath. Notice, notice I just notice this transition. What do we have in the last days? We have his son hath in these last days spoken us to um, spoken unto us by his son whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. So when we mentioned this morning, no th new thing under the sun, um, that's an interesting thought. If the sun, if he is the Lord from heaven, no new thing under the Son of God, no new thing, that's an interesting kind of way to think about that. No new thing under him. No new thing. Under, or actually carnally of the earth. No new thing under the thing that's in the sky. Though. So no new thing. So now, um, okay, so let's see if I can, okay, so if we, if we continue with Jesus here, um, so this relationship of God, I wanted, I wanted to make sure I had this because I carved this out on my paper. I, I drew a channel here, um, kind of like an avenue, because it's through Jesus, brethren. So an entrance into this Godhead, into this relationship, this way of life, this identity, a new identity. Because the Scripture says we are bought with a price, meaning Jesus, His blood. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Um, Jesus says in John 10, I think it is, he says, I am the door. So he's the entrance into this relationship of this wonderful, loving, merciful, eternal Godhead. Um, and it takes reconciliation in Romans 5.10. See, people have to get to the point where they've got to be, and the Scripture says, be ye reconciled 
to God. He, uh, scripture also says he's willing and just to forgive us our sins and to sins and to cleanse us from halfway unrighteousness, all unrighteousness. Five ten, and he's he's powerful enough to do that. And when sin comes to your door, like it did with um, was it a um, Abel? The Almighty told him, told. No, Cain, Cain, Cain. Told Cain, sin lieth, sin is there. Sin lieth at the door. How close is Satan to us in this world? He's so close. Because he wants us. Jesus said to Peter, I think, Satan has the desire to have you. Um, anyway, so back to... So, where, where, where was this? Romans 5? Is that where we were going? Romans 5.10? 5, 5, for... For if, when we were enemies, we were, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. So we're saved by the life of Jesus. He's at the right hand of the Father. We shall be saved by His life. Now, so Jesus is, so into this relationship, what church is, what church is it, brethren, that human beings, there's only one church that people need to be a part of. True church. What is it? 1 Corinthians 5.18? No, 2nd. Okay. Jesus is... Jesus, did He not say, Jesus, did He not say that upon this rock I will build My church? So 2 Corinthians 5. I don't remember what it was, but let's look at that here. 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians 5, 18. Ah, yes. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to Himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. So, if we're partakers of this ministry, we want, and the Gospel is to tell people the news, that the Almighty is, the door is open. Right through Jesus, Jesus said, "I am the door." We talked about the ark. We were talking about the ark, Noah's ark, this morning. We've talked in times past how the door was shut. You know, the door to the ark, whatever platform, if it looked like this, and that door was shut. And if it was shut, was it shut from the inside or the outside? So if it was shut from the outside, the Almighty, I'm just doing this as an illustration. If he shut that door, he shut the door. And all these people out here getting flooded, he shut the door. There were eight people on the inside. He shut the door. Yeah. So don't be shut out. I know Pastor Ed has mentioned a few times about the, the virgins. Five wise and five foolish. Virgins. <clears throat> And the five unwise did not, they weren't ready. So, now, so there's, so on this relationship, um, I, I'm not going to be able to read, I, I had it written down, I guess I had lofty ambitions here, that Colossians 1 through, um, Colossians 1, all, the whole chapter ought to be read. <laughs> um, no, I, so I had, I had lofty, um, ambi uh, anyway. It's, it's a good reading regarding the adoption that we have. A glorious adoption. Now, uh, uh, let's see. So again, we're still on the theme of eternal power and Godhead. Um, Jesus said in John 2.16 that He would draw all men unto Me. Do you recall that there was a, there was a, a boat in the scriptures, and Jesus said, "Cast out the net." And did they not have at one point? Did they not have a whole lot of fish that they couldn't? It was so heavy, so much. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing for people to draw them in? Draw them just one, just wonderful thing. There were what three thousand souls converted in Acts at one one point three or five thousand. Is that correct? Converted. 
Yes. Bless women and children, yes. Can't forget the family. The, yeah, you can't forget. Yeah. Um, in John 6.44, and this is, a, this, is, this is nice. This family. You know, the Almighty, He wants to share His goodness, brethren. He really does. And... And we can tell people when we tell if we tell people our testimony, we can say, "Hey, I did that, did that, and the other. I did that things, like the Ten Commandments on the wall right there. It's a personal checklist for me. Every one of those commandments I have broken. Well, you know, actually, it says if you, Jesus said, if you've broken one, you've broken them all. Or was that James that said, hey, offended one point, he is guilty of all. That is James, I think. But every one of those." Yes, every one of those. Every one of those. Um, every one of them. So, um, so Jesus calls us to. So, actually, John six forty four. No man can come unto me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Jesus mentioned to us um, in John 14, 6, these three things, that He is the way, the truth, and the life. Those three things. There is a, another... There's something else that Jesus was made, and this, I think this ties into the Godhead aspect of... of how important Jesus is in this Godhead, what his participation is, what his role, role. Um, what his essence is, brethren, what his being is. I think it's in Corinthians. It's either in Corinthians or there's four things that Jesus was made. And they, uh, it's... Um, made unto us. I need to just find that really quick. Made unto us. Yes, it is. First Corinthians one thirty. It's uh, W. It's um, W R S R. You may remember these four things. What W R S R stands for? Oh, Jesus. Um, Notice these four things, brethren. And just how critical, just how extremely important Jesus is, the Son of God. But of Him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is, notice this, He's made unto us, Jesus is made unto us, these four, these things are, I guess you could say, that are out of this world. Wisdom, Righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. These things are encapsulated. These high things, brethren, are encapsulated in the Son of God. Wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, redemption. Brethren, there is... Do you, how much gospel is in the Son of God? Yeah, all of it. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. So, brethren, um, let's 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 try one more, one or two more verses here. Jesus did set a high standard. So, if those four things—wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, redemption. Those are a study, each one of them are a study in and of themselves. That could be a topic. Take those, we could take those four sometime. Jesus set a high standard in Matthew 10. Jesus' standard is so high. And you know, He sets that standard because God gave Him that standard. Jesus 10.37 He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. 
He goes on to say to take up your cross. And I find it interesting, this faith that Brother Paul had, where Paul said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. It's a high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That's Philippians. If we circle back around the high calling, someone was highly exalted in uh, Philippians 2.9. Just how important is Jesus in Philippians 2 9? And being found in, and this is 8, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, wherefore God. So there is a reason why God is highly exalting him, because Jesus gave up all for us. Wherefore God hath highly, also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth, and that every, every, every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. May God bless, brethren.